Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today we're having a look at the wild turkey rare breed. And yes, last time we had the wild turkey 101 and it was really intense. And now we're looking at the rare breed, which is cask strength. So it's to be expected to be even more intense because it has a higher uh, alcohol by volume. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, more expensive, probably a bit more high quality as well. So um, yeah, it was so good that uh, we actually gave it uh, the award for best whiskey uh, of 25 years in whiskey.de. So it is an exceptional whiskey and we're selling it for 35 uh, euros in Germany. And it will not be much different around UK or US or somewhere around the world. And that is a good price for such a good whiskey. So I'm expecting a really good whiskey. Maybe I'm getting disappointed today, but uh, I'm not. Probably. <laughs> and what do I call it? Um, I've had a bit of a talk about quality and production of wild turkey last time. Now let's get a bit of into history. Um, recent history. The Wild Turkey Distillery um, got sold in the 70s to a guy named Austin Nickel Nichlos and Company, uh, a wholesaler from New York City. And he overtook the uh, distillery and he produced. And uh, later then in 2009, the Campari Group, Campari, I think they're Italian, aren't they? Uh, they took over the company and they are actually developing uh, the wild turkey distillery pretty good. So they have their own bottling plant where they have to bottle other Campari products as well. Um, but still, they're bottling their own stuff and they're going really into cask management and they're going really into quality. They have upgraded the plant a little bit into more high tech gear. So. Um, Wild Turkey is well thought after, or well, well seen after by uh, the Campari group. So, um, what are we having? 116.8 proof, that is 58.4% ABV. Um, yeah, they're using heavily charred uh, casks, so we'll expect no sharp alcohols maybe a few due to the cask strength. Maybe I should dilute it down a little bit. I'll take a sip and then see if I'll dilute it down for the second sip. Oh, it's very, very round with, with a little bit of flowers in there, but really, really deep and dark. Like, uh, do you know when these flowers are not that fresh and outside but you have like a, a, a rose a very scented uh, overwhelming rose that is similar to that it's not a, a bunch of flowers on the on the field but a rose bush or some lavender or, or something like that that is the 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 smell that i'm getting Oh, a little bit of sweetness coming through as well. A little bit of a, a round caramel, but not that much. It's, it's very, very flowery. Bit of atypical for Kentucky straight bourbon. Mmm, nice. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Mm. Wow, wow. Oh. Mm. I said Wild Turkey 101 is really intense. Mm. Now that puts it a bit more into perspective. This is really, really intense. This, this gives it just a bit more, even more kick to it. So it's a... Uh, mm. You have oranges, you have um, brown sugar, you have a bit of a, a little bit of a rum flavor as well. 
And there's a lot going on in this whiskey. There's a lot of oak going on. There's a bit of a, a dry feeling in my mouth. Maybe a bit, um, maybe it's a bit too much alcohol. You don't realize the alcohol so, so strong here because it's, uh, it's actually really well matured. So you realize you have a, a very, very well matured whiskey. It didn't add that much water. A very, very well matured whiskey. Mm. And that hides a bit of the sharper alcohols due to the heavy char. They actually said number four char on the bottle. So they don't give you an age statement, but they give you the, the quality of the cask. Mm. Mm. Now with a little bit of water, mm, it becomes much sweeter at the beginning. Now here comes the oranges, a little bit of a zesty orange as well. I think we had that in the in the 101 so already as well. So I mean, that's, a bit, that's a bit of a wild turkey character. Mm. And it's, it's very well with a lot of oak in there. But it's you do realize it's American white oak. So it's not that bitter. It's very round and smooth in the back. Mmm. 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 I like it. I have to say I like them both. But mm, they're really demanding. So there's so much intensity. So mm, I'd really have to recommend you uh, enjoy these as pretty much your last drink on that evening because everything after that will be tainted with the flavor of wild turkey because it's just so intense a bit dry a little bit of dryness going on in my mouth some people like that i find it mm, intriguing mm, but the flavor is still in my mouth it's very much there but um this time the comparison to the 101 this one is uh not as spicy so all this rye and stuff and pines and it's left out don't have that in here it's more of a oak note and orange oiliness a little bit of bitter sweetness going on mm, i love that mm. it's a really really good whiskey and i, I do know now why Horst chose it for the best whiskies in 25 years from whiskey.de so yeah um, I'd really recommend uh, have at least one of the wild turkeys at least once in your life because they are exceptionally well made and good quality whiskies. You do pay a bit more than your usual standard discount whiskey, but they are worth your while. They're not as expensive as a lot of Scotch whiskies or um, other high class whiskies from America, but they are exceptional quality. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.